hello everybody. Um, welcome to my talk about a, a topic that uh, is still quite new in Nix, and it's called Nix Flakes. So, what's what's Nix Flakes? What also what's the motivation behind this whole thing? So, with Nix Flakes, uh, we try to introduce a concept into Nix um, that solves the problem that we currently don't have a standardized way how you can import code in your uh yeah or how you, how you structure code in your in your project so there's no defined schema so every project solves it is slightly different and you always have to refer to the readme so it's, there's no easy way to do this automatically um so so there's no way how, where you or there's no place where you would put if you have a repo where you put modules if you want to have them for someone else to import as well as next packages um, and it's also not easy uh, to have standardize uh, dependencies. So if you have imported code and it depends, for example, on um, Nix packages, which is our uh, central repository where we have all code, there's no um, standardized way how you can override these dependencies if you import uh, code from someone else. Uh, which code? With code, I mean uh, Nix code in this case. Uh, yeah, and as well, um, there's a different problem that uh, yeah, pinning specific version of dependencies uh, with with, with Nix uh, yeah, repositories is uh, quite hard. So you can, if you have one Nix packages, you can pin that for you. Uh, but it's, for example, not easy to pin that in Nixos itself. Uh, so we have this concept of Nix channel, but this is not really pinned. So this is uh, dynamic, and it's basically when you update the next channel the last time and then it, this is will be this version and then there's next path which is also a bit um, hard to set up and yeah all the other solutions that have been built uh, for for downloading next package uh, for for down next uh, code um that don't really work for for nixos itself so you can use them for your project but if you want to reuse them for configuration.nix then this is kind of hard um so yeah, this problem uh, Nix tries uh, Flex uh, wants to solve and make uh, uh, Nix evaluation so uh, reproducible. So what is Flex actually? So with Flex um, or a flag itself is basically a directory or a repository that could be like a Git repository or something else uh, that contains a flag.nix. And this flag.nix um, then describes what inputs, so what other dependencies this uh, flag has, and what outputs it provides. So what packages it exposes, what libraries, what Nixos modules, and so on and so on. Um, so all the inputs as well um, are locked in a, in a separate file. So there's a file called flag.lock. And this file is uh, yeah, JSON encoded, uh, while flake.nix is obviously, uh, hence the name, uh, written in Nix. And uh, the flake.log, uh, then, um, yeah, if you, for example, pin Nix packages, it will have the uh, Git revision log there, as well as the hash for that. Um, so when someone else tries to um, yeah, use the flake, they will have get the same inputs as what uh, the creator of the flake.log got. And the output itself uh, is then a well-defined schema, which I will later in this talk also explain. And yeah, it provides this standardized interface uh, where it describes packages, overlays. Uh, yeah, there's, there's basically uh, almost everything you have uh, in Nixos is, has an attribute, uh, defined attribute there. So you can query it and tools already uh, look for specific attributes in there. Uh, which, for example, makes it possible to search all packages in a flake. And this, this whole thing then uh, allows us to modelize the whole ecosystem, because right now we have this mono repo, more or less, which is called Nix packages, and uh, flakes uh, allows to make it easier for me, for example, to create my own uh, sets of packages and uh, share it with someone else. And they, so they ca I can just point them to, to my flake URL, and then they can import from there, and it's quite easy. So this is so much what uh, Flag is about. Um, Flag is currently an experimental feature, which means um, it could change its interfaces. Hence, uh, it's required uh, for yeah. If you want to test it out, you need first to 
um, install Nix Unstable, or there's also a thing called Nix Flake, but it's the same at the moment because Flakes are also now in Nix Unstable. And um, yeah, you have to in NixOS uh, overwrite the Nix.package uh, attribute and also set um, X for options. Um, and if you don't use NixOS, then you can um, yeah use Unix env to install Unix unstable. Then you maybe uh, you have to restart uh, your Unix daemon, and you also have to uh, write the Unix conf manually and to have these uh, two um, experimental features, like the Unix the Nix command, which is yeah the new command line interface. So after you have a Unix, that yeah, a bit about more about this experimental. So yeah, it's um. It's functional, so Flakes itself have been developed mostly last year, so they are now more or less functional. Um, I don't expect a lot of big changes there. Um, also, I cannot really say what, what Echo accepts as, as changes to, to Flakes, but uh, from the looks of it is that Nix development itself uh, moved on to other parts of, of Nix itself. For example, currently a lot of work is going on into making um, Nix uh, derivations content addressable. Uh, so I suspect that Flex itself won't change so much, so I think it's uh, rather safe uh, for, yeah, if you want to try out Flex and use it for your system, that you won't have major, uh, major breaking uh, changes there. And also Elko wrote some documentation for it, and I think he doesn't want to rewrite the whole documentation, so that's what I also take as indication that it's now more settled. So uh, this is for the current state. Um, let me go over uh, what the flake dot, uh, Nix looks like. So um, this is a very basic example. Um, it's it's almost the example you would get if you use uh, Nix flake uh, new. Um, so this generates from some template and uh, it just modified it from there. So you have a description above uh, that might be useful later on when we have uh, a lot of flags and we have some sort of search engine so you have some sort of description. Currently, I think it's I think it's used in some there's some introspection we can list the flag, but yeah, it doesn't it's not too important. It's optional indeed. Um, then there are two fields uh, which are important. So there's inputs and outputs. So I both mentioned what uh, the task of both is. So we see um, here in this example, we have um, as an input, we take Nix packages and um, .url and you see um, there's for GitHub, for example, there's a special syntax like a shorthand and it will expand to yeah, basically downloading um, things over the GitHub API, the tarball uh, for, for, for Nix packages and all inputs then get passed to outputs, which is on the third line here. And here you see a function uh, which receives two arguments. Um, so by default, every flake uh, receives the self argument, which is basically the flake, self, uh, the flake itself. Um, so which mean what does it mean? It's a reference to the flake. So basically, you can use self if you want to access, for example. Um, the source code of the flake, so it's quite useful for building, uh, and I'll explain uh, later wh why this is uh, useful. And then there's also Nix packages, and this is uh, also an object, and um, yeah, it's basically the outputs of uh, everything that Nix packages outputs in its flake. So Nix packages itself is also a flake. Uh, so Nix packages, um, for example, defines uh, one attribute called legacy packages. And legacy packages contains then um, everything that Nix, Nix packages has. Uh, so um, and you can access that using um, dot and then the system of you that you currently have. So if you have an Arch64 Linux, then you would use that instead of an x86, uh, yeah, Linux, what is currently here. And yeah, well, so why is the system here? Um, Nix wants to make evaluation as well uh, reproducible, so it makes um, the architecture explicit because it's used as well um, in the evaluation and it could change the evaluation. So it, it tries to fix everything. So you can, if you evaluate, you get the exact same um, store paths or derivation names on each system. So if you go now down here, uh, um, yeah, 
our output outputs basically consists of a packages output that defines um, an example package for a Linux x86 64 um, bit. And yeah, we just create here a derivation, a very simple one, um, which is called foo. And it receives a self as uh, the argument uh, as a source. Um, so it basically builds uh, from the current flake from, from the source repository. So it, it gets every, every source file that is, um, was added to the flake will be available during the build. And uh, here in this case, we just have a simple shell script that we um, install to the output on this line. And this is all it does. And then as well, uh, we set uh, default package at attribute. I will later explain what's the difference between packages and default packages. And yeah, that's basically, um, yeah, just this is a very simple flake. It just uh, defines one package basically, and also sets this as a default package. Okay, so this is the basic schema. Oh, that's the first example. Um, so now if, if you have yeah, written this, um, yeah, there's a way you need to reference that. So um, in the flag, you have on the right part, you have something like a URL, and then there's a um, hash rocket, and then and after that, there are attributes. Um, for example, um, if I, yeah, from the previous example, if I want to build example, then I would use something like dot hash rocket example, or um, I can, because it's a default package, I can just uh, skip this and just write dot uh, hash rocket, or I just uh, skip everything and just say next build, because it will default to um, the default package. Uh, yeah, I can also use that for um, other repositories. For example, yesterday I presented a project called uh, NixLD. Um, I I think it's yeah, it should be a flake. Yeah, so it should be a flake as well. And uh, it also has a package called NixLD. And if you want to build uh, the package um, NixLD from this flake, you can just add it after the hash rocket, and then it will build from there. So this is quite useful. You can you don't need to do a lot of things. You can just build or run applications uh, just by referencing the flag. So it's a bit like what you have from containers, but you don't have to buy it to the container ecosystem. Um, and yeah, then, yeah, it also this works for Nix packages itself. You can also, Nix packages, since it's also a flag, you can also say Nix packages, um, hash rocket uh, GQ. And you can also ha use the run command and run it's a nice, uh, it's a nice, has this nice default. It basically looks into the package and expects um, a package, uh, an executable that has the same name as a package, which is quite often the case. So it could just execute JQ, and you don't need to specify any command. It just assumes that this is the default um, program in there. Um, so this syntax has, is quite nice. You can just, for example, say uh, I want to deploy um, my NixOS configuration that is uh, hosted on on a Git or in a Git or something like that, and then you can just specify the URL. You don't need to download anything, and it just deploys from there. This is this what this was about. What yeah, flex URLs looks like. So some more examples here again in our flex.nix. Um, so you can, yeah, the first example was just, yeah, the basic one, which we already had with Flake Utils. Um, then it's also possible to specify a branch. You do that by um, appending to, uh, yeah, the branch name after um, the base URL. Uh, it's not just GitHub that is supported. It's just, uh, it didn't have, include any other example. You can also just use uh, any Git repository. You can use Mercurial. Uh, I don't know what other um, version control systems are supported. Um, you can also um, include repositories that are not flakes, which is sometimes useful, especially now not every repository is a flake yet. Um, but you can still use the source code from them um, and import them newly. And what is also a nice feature is you can overwrite um, inputs. So for example, let's say you use Home Manager, but you don't want to use the next packages version that was specified there. You can use, uh, you can say follows and next packages. So it will follow, um, okay, the next package is not here, but let's say next packages would be on uh, defined on this line. It would follow this 
uh, version there. So you use uh, Home Manager with Nix packages in the same version that you also use for everything else. So you don't have uh, duplication. Uh, so you don't use different versions and have different binaries. So it's less duplication, which is quite nice. And this, yeah, this way you can flat the uh, dependency tree a bit, so you can, uh, yeah, avoid having different versions of packages that you of flakes that you don't want to have in a different version. So this was the software inputs. Uh, when you have defined your inputs, you can say, for example, flag, flake update a minus minus recall a uh, recreate log file, and this will uh, create this uh, set log file flake.log. So you can see here um, all the metadata about the uh, thing that was logged, like checksum and everything. So you never need to um, edit this manually. You would mainly um, add this to your Git repository as well. So that's it for this. And um, yeah, then I said there were more than the um, attributes that we had before. Uh, you can read them all on in the wiki. We have an um, overview of all flags that exist. I think I forgot to update this. So description shouldn't be here. Uh, it should be up. Uh, this is wrong. Um, and yeah, then yeah, you can, it will just quickly summarize. So the system here means basically um, something like x86 uh, minus Linux, for example, and the attribute would be then the attribute. And then you need to put it in derivation, and then you have different attributes that do different things. For example, next build would look into the default package, while next run would look into apps first, and then maybe in packages. Uh, and therefore, you have basically for all these different tools, you have different um, attributes. Um, so one of the more um, interesting ones, for example, is uh, configurations. Uh, NixOS configuration, because here you can put in um, your NixOS uh, configuration. So you um, put in the, you, know, you set the host name there. So for example, my host name would be Turing Machine on my laptop. And um, then when you use NixOS Rebuild, it will automatically um, tell that um, uh, that yeah, it will automatically use the host name by default. So it will look for a uh, host name uh, for Turing machine in XS configurations and look for this attribute and then build uh, its system from there. So this was quite cool because then you can have each system in, in one flake.nix and they just are uh, different uh, or selected based on the host name. Um, yeah, I will also show a more complex example later. Yeah, what else do we have? Yeah, I think we have overlays as well as and NixOS modules and yeah, and so on and so on. So if you want to use flakes to um, yeah rebuild your NixOS configuration, then there uh, you need to install NixFlex or Nix Unstable as said before in your configuration Nix, and then uh, now comes the hard part. You also need to get uh, rid of all the um, impure imports that you do. So um, yeah, with flakes, we want to get rid of the next path. So when you when you use the um, brackets like this, then this means uh, you have an import that depends on the next path, and you need to be replaced that. So for example. Um, if you have the hardware configuration, it will usually contain a line that imports like a, something like a hardware module. And uh, in this case, you can use uh, module paths. Um, I, what I didn't make, uh, add in this example, module paths, you can just import here um, or you can pass it as a parameter to, to the module. Uh, so it's defined by default. And this gives you basically um, the modules paths of Nix packages itself, so you can reference Nix packages again. And um, all the other modules, all the third party modules that are not in Nix packages, um, you can um, import uh, differently. I will show in the next slide actually. So now that you have yeah, got rid of all the Nix packages references, for example, um, you need to define uh, your NixOS configuration. So in this case, um, 
I define it for, for my laptop, it's a string machine. And in Nix packages, it comes with um, a function called Nixer system. It's stored in lib. And um, yeah, you need to specify what uh, system you're building on. If you have an RH64, then it's a different system. Um, so this is already in then. And then, yeah, it only tries to deploy this very binary. And then if you have, for example, third-party modules, for example, Nixer has hardware as a flake, and you can export, for example, the configuration for um, your prof your hardware profile, and then yeah, you can as usual you can have you can put every actually uh, Xos configuration in in here, or you can import it. So it's yeah. But I I I found it a good way to just import it from the Excel file. Yeah. So that's basically everything about yeah how you use it in Xos. From there, you just use Nixos as you already know with the module system and so on. Um, yeah, okay, maybe now to some, can speak about some pitfalls when you start with uh, flakes. Uh, so one thing you have to be aware about is if your um, flake is in a Git repository or in any version control system, um, it will use information from Git to uh, figure out what it adds to the flake. So that means that only tracked files actually become part of the flake. The reason for that is that it's quite makes it quite easy to filter out um, unwanted files. For example, if you um, have a bigger C project and um, your flake, um, yeah, and in your directory you also have a build directory, and every build you would need to co copy the quite large build directory as well to the next door, because um, yeah, when you create a flag, uh, when you evaluate it, it's actually copied to the next store as well. Um, so you avoid it this way, which is quite nice because it avoids a lot of rebuilds and stuff and makes it more efficient. But you have to be aware of this fact. So, for example, if you just start with a, with a new repository and you say, okay, I have this repository ready, and then you create a flag, and uh, you have a flag.nix, which is a really, this is just an example, and then you try to execute flag info, you will see, ah, uh, this repository here doesn't contain my Nick Flake file. Um, so, yeah, and that's because it's not tracked by Git yet. And, and once you track it by Git, then Nick Flake info will work as well. Same as for every other Nick file or any other file that you reference in your Flake somehow when you do something. So, yeah, and if you also look then, if you look at the path that it, uh, when it evaluates, then it will contain um, all the files that have been before in the repository. So, so this is also something I uh, had to deal with when I was first starting. In uh, first starting, I yeah tried to use it, and then the flake .nix was missing, and yeah, I have had no idea what what's what's happening here until someone explained to me. Um, something else which I found quite nice uh, because I didn't like this uh, whole uh, specifying uh, or hard coding um, architectures, uh, which Next flags require. There's something called flex utils, and basically what it does is uh, it already defines uh, for all the standard architectures. It defines already um, the attributes, so you only specify the ones here. So you, you save a, a quite a bit of boiler code. There's different um, ways to do that. So this, there's one abstraction called simple flag. There were other other variants, and you can. Yeah, it saves you a bit of code, and since it's a flag, you can just import it, and you have a little utility library that um, does some stuff. Um, so you can check it out if you want to have more information about that. So I would recommend, uh, so you don't need that if you just use it for your Nixos configuration, but if you have some project and you want to share it with other people, it might be worth, worth looking into that. Um, yeah, then here I have some... Um, mapping from what the old commands look like to the new ones. Um, for example, when you used uh, next build and you used minus a and package, so if you go to a directory and you have the default dot next and then you build this package, the new syntax with a flake would look like next build and then you use the dot for the current directory and then hash rock, um, pound sign and then uh, package. And yeah, it will look in packages or defaults. If you don't specify the package here, then it will look at the default package. Um, 
than if you used uh, Nix shell before. So all these commands still exist, but uh, yeah, this is just a new equivalent if you use it with flakes. Uh, so if you use Nix develop, for example, it will now look into dev shell in this attribute. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it looks also apparently in default package. I think this also now is uh, written in the manual nicely down if I ma made anything wrong here. Um, then, yeah, there was used to be something called Nix run. It's now Nix shell. Uh, this is basically like a version of, of the old Nix shell here, but it doesn't uh, do some things like uh, yeah, downloading a C compiler. It only downloads the programs that you specify here. And yeah, so they renamed that to Nix shell, and then there's a new Nix run, which uh, just executes commands directly. So it tries to find an executable in a, pro in a package that it runs. While this only gives you a new shell, that has a new um, application in its path. Yeah, so there are some more, more commands, uh, but yeah, I won't mention them all. Um, yeah, so this actually brings me to the end of my talk. So as I mentioned before, the wiki is quite useful. Uh, there's also free blog posts where some of the motivation and um, yeah, also some of the stuff I explained here, like how to use it, what I uh, explained. And then uh, we also have quite recently now uh, a manual that has uh, the new um, tools and uh, flags on everything described. So it's not yet uh, on an official URL, but if you, yeah, it will publish the slides later, but it's currently stored in Hydra. But you can also, I think you can also get it when you go to the readme there. Um, and then, yeah, that's all of, I think, that's for my talk. Do we have questions? So the question was why uh, if we why we do we use um, experimental features instead of channel pinning? So channel pinning. So channel pinning would be something like uh, we would pick Nix channel pin Nix packages or something. So yeah, I mean. Ah, okay, why we use flakes instead of channel pinning. Um, so, yeah, you cannot really pin channels in um, Nixos itself. So if you try to, uh, there, I mean, there, there are some hacks, but they're quite horrible. So, and it's not really intuitive. Um, so there's not, it's not happening automatically, for example. Uh, you can use tools like NIF, but they also don't really work well with uh, NixOS, for example. And um, yeah, you still lack the semantics, so you don't have the standardization of all the attributes, um, which is quite nice if you want to build some sort of search engines. So for example, I have a different project called uh, the New Lua, which is the Nix user repository. And there we also uh, defined some sort of standard uh, attributes so everybody would use them. So we had something similar to, to um, Flex, uh, but Flex also has then, yeah, it basically blocks all uh, impure um, imports. So if you, have a, if you import some code from someone else, you don't know what other code they import because it's not blocked. With Flakes, you have a standardized interface. You can can make sure that they won't import anything that was not specified in Flakes. So um, yeah, and that happens quite often actually. So in 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 Lua, for example, I saw we had we had we had to dis uh, we disabled uh, this feature that you can import other dependencies because then otherwise people would import Nix packages over and over again, and that would explode uh, evaluation time and everything. So yeah. It ha it it's good to to, have to make basically a clear cut and have uh, not lo no longer allow anything to import. Okay, next question maybe. Ah, so I haven't mentioned that. Uh, so the question was, um, or can you repeat the question? Okay, so um, someone else pointed out that uh, also evaluation time is, an, uh, is a reason to use Nix. 
uh, flakes. So yes, that's true. So it has some sort of SQLite database and it basically, um, when you evaluate an attribute, it only does it on the first uh, run and then the second run it has the attribute already cached. So it has cached the uh, derivation and that basically means you, you save some evaluation as long as the cache is valid. Why use okay? The question was why you use Flex now instead of waiting for an uh, implementation, uh, waiting for an FC and a stable implementation. Um, so I found um, not having Flex quite a bit of a pain. Um, if you have multiple machines and you want to make sure they're all in the same version, for example, I have a little a small cluster of just five uh, PP servers. And I just want to make sure that every of these machines have the same exact version. And um, that is quite hard. I found this quite hard without Flex. And it's also quite hard to keep, for example, versions consistent between your CI system and your machine. So now I have a Flex, I can just use any uh, CI that has uh, Nix uh, Flex support. And I can just build my stuff there, upload it to the binary cache, and then when I downloaded it, uh, it um, yeah, it just it just works and has the same version. And now we also get things like we can specify binary caches in Flex, which you can also not do with anything else uh, right now. So you can even get uh, cached uh, binaries out of the Flex. Okay, yeah. So this this is my reasons to why I use the Flex already and instead of waiting. Okay, the question is if there's an example that combines um, shell pinning or niche, niche develop, um, what was out of, out of LF stuff? Ah, okay, so the question is if there's a hybrid between using the old version, uh, the old pinning and the new pinning. Um, so basically using flakes and then using something else. So um, what I, yeah, so there's this compatibility here um, called um, flake compat. So this would be one option. I didn't mention that. Um, I don't use it because I either use one or the other. Um, but basically you can import that. So it's for example, if you go to Nixos, and um, Nix. Then there is uh, a default of Nix, and if you look into that, it will just import this flag compat thing, compat thing, and then it will uh, map flag features into the legacy or the yeah the legacy the old the other Nix the, the current stable Nix. Uh, so you can use some way uh, features this way. Um, what I did sometimes when I was transitioning, I still had NIF set up and import from there, or if I had flags then I would use the other thing. Um, or what I also did is, um, yeah, some tooling, for example, doesn't really support the, the new flag stuff, uh, but sometimes you can work around that because there's also a built-in. So this requires that you have at least an X flag um, user tool installed. And um, if you have a tool that doesn't uh, understand Nix in a way, um, you can have, for example, you can write uh, some other file. It's, in this case, it's for example, ci.nix. And there you can, for example, uh, get a reference to the flag, and then you can do something with, with the inputs, for example, or the outputs. Uh, so what I did here is I, I recreated a ci.nix that I can use to build stuff in my CI uh, using Hydra, Hydra Drops attribute from, from the flake. So the question is if uh, flakes get uh, or leave the experimental status in the next version or in the next Nixos version. And the answer is I don't know. <laughs> so uh, no, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, 
it, it seems it seems take quite a while. Um, I, I think I would say before that happens, first we need to get a new Nix version in Nix packages. Uh, that is not Nix unstable. That is uh, basically a released version. Um, and then yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what what will happen then. Uh, yeah, this is something you need to ask uh, Echo, for example. Okay, so here's a complaint that um, Git repositories that are not on GitHub are not so easy to include. Um, I think it's reasonably complex. Uh, so I have one example here. Um, so here. So you do, you, you, it's a bit longer, but of course you need to include the URL somehow. So you say git dot plus HTTPS, for example, so you use the HTTPS uh, protocol for Git. And then this is how I import Git. Uh, I don't know if there was a shortcut for GitLab actually. I've, I've, okay, I was just talk. I was just uh, uh, told that there's also a shorthand for GitLab. So I think it's 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 okay. It's not too complex. It's it's uh, if you. <laughs> okay. Okay, and I also got told uh, from from Clunk that uh, apparently GT support is also in this in, in Flakes, uh, so you can also use that as a um, yeah, it has special support. Oh. Um, yeah, home manager. The, so the question was if there's an easy upgrade path for home manager, and the answer is uh, uh, no. If you use Home Manager, Home Manager the command line um, program, because it still doesn't feature native Flex support. Um, however, what is possible right now is if you use it, uh, Home Manager in your Nixos configuration, uh, because then you just import it there and then it gets built with your Nixos configuration. So that, that should work with Flex. Um, but yeah, for Home Manager, I also am um, not really using, um, I, I kind of use Flex. So what I did. I can show you actually the hack that I'm I'm doing. Um, so what you can do with tools that don't support uh, the new syntax yet, um, there's an easy hack. You can basically set, you can pin uh, the next path. Um, so um, here. So you can, over Nixos configuration, you can basically pin the next path, and I use that to pin next packages from my flag itself. So this way, it will also pin Home Manager and next packages, so I can get some of the flex features again. Okay, the question was, uh, if I know a good way to combine next ops and flex, as I'm not using uh, Nix Ops, so I'm not sure what the current state there is. Um, so I use crops right now. Uh, I would expect they have something. Uh, they, do they have a flag? <laughs> because they also make heavily themselves. Uh, yeah, I have to pass on this question. I don't know. Um, yeah, I would assume that there should be something, but yeah. Uh, can you repeat the question? So uh, the question was if it's possible to uh, basically bypass uh, flakes and import uh, Nix code or anything impurely. And the answer is no, you can't. Uh, so uh, import from derivations. So you have to basically, everything has to have a uh, um, uh, a checksum and everything, so you, you, you need to, I think, uh, how far did it go? So impure interrogation itself shouldn't be possible, so it should be reproducible. Uh, you can only import stuff that somehow uh, included in some of the flags you're using. Otherwise you have to specify the uh, minus minus impure flag, and then you know already that you did something wrong. Um,
Uh, can you repeat the, the last half sentence? So. Uh, so the question is if you have just a very simple setup uh, with NixOS and you just want to rebuild build your local machine and update it once in a while. And I have to say it, it's work, it works actually, it's, it's not actually that much different from, from channels this way. Uh, so yeah, the only difference is you have this flake.log file and you can just, yeah, instead of updating channels, uh, what you do is um, every once in a while just say um, upgrade, recreate a uh, log file and yeah then your NixOS will be updated as well so and basically um, yeah I, I think I haven't mentioned that very clear um, so if you use NixOS with flakes uh, as soon as you just put in um, a flake.nix in etc NixOS flake.nix so if you as soon as you put the file there and you have uh, Nix enabled flake, uh, then it will automatically pick it up. Uh, so it's it's quite e it's it's not that much different. You can use a NixOS rebuild switch. You don't need to par specify any parameter. It will just work the same way. Okay, so now the question was, uh, how does uh, the binary cache option works in uh, Flex, uh, and, and if it only uh, serve packages from uh, this Flex? So I don't think it has a lot of security features there. So I think it will just use. Ah, I think it would only use it for the current Flex somehow. Uh, I think this is how I read it. Uh, I haven't used it actually myself. So I, yeah, better check yourself. But I think the way it was implemented it would, would only um, scope it to the current flake. Okay, and the other what also was noted is that you still have to um, you have to be a trusted user or something there, so you can override the um, um, binary cache URL um, for use for your Unix user. Um, so the question was if uh, Nix channels will be deprecated in the future, and I think yes, it will at some point we will it will be deprecated. Uh, I don't know when this happens, and I also hear that uh, all the old uh, tools at some point, so like Nix shell or Nix build, might get um, deprecated. But I don't know the timeline for this. I think there's a lot of tools that still depends on that, so it might take a while. Um, but I hear something like um, basically. Um, in the next release, or maybe like something like Nix 3.0 or something like that, so then it might get um, removed actually the old uh, command line. Okay, I just got a link in the IC in Mumble. Um, okay. It's good that I put a, uh, had a lot of planned a lot of time for questions. Um, so <laughs> I also got just got a question if uh, Flex needs to go through the RFC process first. <laughs> this is a bit uh, uh, a, a question. Yeah, so. Yeah, Echo uh, basically put it out as an experimental feature, and I think uh, yeah, I, f I think at some point we might see an RFC again uh, for this. But uh, right now it seems to be more like an implementation driven. Um, yeah. S so where, where's the sorry? So where's the um, the code here? The code. Ah, here. Um, okay, I look at the thing. Why can't uh, why can't we do something like? Uh... 
Um, so here the question is why the next language is restricted. Um, I think uh, they only allow a subset in the flake.nix. So it's not like the whole... So there are some syntax restrictions. And I think uh, one of the reasons was that they also want to have um, other file formats. For example, I saw something where they had like a toml, dot, dot, toml file instead of uh, so a flake.toml or something like that. Uh, so basically to, to make it uh, more approachable for new users that are not really um, comfortable yet with, with Nix. So they can still have some sort of um, a way to yeah, set up a development environment without having to buy into the whole Nix ecosystem. I think therefore they, uh, yeah, there's some, some parts of the flake.nix are restricted. And what I also got just told, it might be also because of the evaluation cache um, that um, some stuff uh, is restricted in a flake.nix syntax. Okay. So, okay, then I can actually go to the last question. <laughs> uh, what are the reasons not to use flex yet, but wait for, okay, we already got it, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I think I already sort of answered this question. So yeah, for some reasons this RC got closed. <laughs> uh, I don't know the reason for that. Uh, you have to ask Echo again. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um yeah, I think I think that's that's all. That's it. Um yeah, so I think that then I will finish the Q&A round and um, thank you for your attention. I will also try to store my, stop my recording and hope everything works. Okay, it's still not happening. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope we don't lose the stream. <laughs> uh, okay, I stopped the stream here. Goodbye.